My name is Mike Hawes, and I'm the Chief Executive of Dolomite Bio, part of the Black Trace group of companies. We specialise in single-cell droplet biology applications, and today, this video will mostly be presented by my colleague, Patrick Gilligan, who's a Senior Application Scientist at Dolomite Bio. And today, Patrick's going to be talking to you about single-cell RNA-seq. This technology enables tens of thousands of single cells to be encapsulated along with barcoded mRNA capture beams in droplets that are just about a tenth of a millimetre in diameter, which equates to about 100 picolitres in volume. And this enables sequencing of tens of thousands of single cell transcriptomes. So, Patrick, over to you. So two interesting things have happened in recent years with microfluidics. One is that there are now off-the-shelf systems that you can buy for microfluidics, which are usable and reliable now that a skilled molecular biologist can use them. The other exciting thing that's happened is there are now applications which are really genuinely useful in a biology lab. For instance, the RNA seq single cell application. To give a little bit of background on droplet microfluidics, what typically happens is that you have a microfluidic chip that makes aqueous droplets in oil. These aqueous droplets are on the size range of about 100 picoliters, and they're made at rates of approximately thousands of droplets per second. Typically, you'll have two flows, such as cells and some reaction mix, that have been mixed just a few hundred, just a hundred microns or so before the junction. The aqueous droplets are made in fluorous oils. Fluorous oils are similar to hydrocarbon oils, except that they have fluorine atoms substituted for hydrogen atoms. The fluorous oils effectively isolate the contents of one aqueous droplet from the other, so they make the droplets behave as discrete microreactors. Fluorous oils are biocompatible, safe, non-toxic, and cells can typically stay alive if necessary in fluorous oil droplets for days. Another thing that happens with droplet microfluidics is when you lyse a, drop, when you lyse a cell in a 100 picoliter droplet, the mRNA from that cell ends up being in a high effective concentration. This makes, such, this makes things like capture of mRNA on mRNA captured beads, or RT-PCR, highly efficient because of the high effective concentrations. In more detail, in the single cell mRNA seq application, you have three streams. Two aqueous streams, one of which is the barcoded beads and the other is the cells. The barcoded beads are beads that have mRNA capture oligos on them, and part of that oligo sequence is a barcode. The barcode is synthesized such that every oligo on one bead has the same barcode sequence, but every bead in the library has a different barcode sequence. What this allows you to do is that after mRNA capture and reverse transcription and sequencing, you can infer the cell of origin by clustering cells by barcode sequence. On the microfluidic chip, the two streams with the barcoded beads in the cells are mixed approximately 100 microns before the junction. Then what you're aiming to do is to capture single cells with single barcoded beads in droplets. Once the cell gets into a droplet with a bead, the lysis buffer breaks the cell open and the mRNA is captured on the bead. Once the emulsion comes off the chip, you break the emulsion, wash the beads, and then you go straight into the reverse transcription for the sequencing. In this way, the droplet system is straightforwardly compatible with downstream processing steps. To go into more detail, the bead is decorated with many copies of an oligo. The oligo has a binding site for sequencing primer, and then it has the barcode sequence, and it also has a poly-EP switch, which captures the mRNA and primes reverse transcription. This slide gives you an overview of what the system looks like. At the top, you can see a schematic of what the microfluidic system looks like. On the right is the drawing of the chip. The chip has two separate microfluidic circuits on it, of which you only use one at any given time. At the bottom, you can see a close-up of the junction, and you can see a bead coming in in the center, central stream and a cell up here. And then downstream, you can see droplets. So this is what the junction looks like when it's running at 4,000 droplets per second, which is a typical droplet production rate. On the right are droplets after they've come off the chip. You can see beads in approximately 10% of the droplets. 
you can't see the cells because they've already been lysed by the license buffer. Here we have a droplet microfluidic system. So there are three pumps, one for each of the three flows. Here we have the high-speed digital microscope, which we developed specifically for droplet microfluidics for biology. There's two reasons for this. One is that when droplet microfluidic ships are making droplets, the droplet production rates are quite high, on the order of several thousand droplets a second. This can make it quite hard, quite hard to see the droplets on a standard microscope. The other reason is that the stage is specifically built to handle a variety of different microfluidic equipment. In this case, there's a single cell RNA seq chip on the on the stage. Also, the lens we have on the scope is a long working distance lens, which should be plenty of working distance to work with different microfluidic devices. Here we have a sample book which we're using for loading the beads. The reason for this is that the beads in this protocol are large and delicate, and they're easily broken by magnetic stirring, for instance. So this is a gentle way of feeding the beads. Upstream of this, of the sample loop, is the sample injection valve. And attached to the sample injection valve is a fitting through which you can inject the beads into the sample loop using the standard one mil lower lock syringe. And here we have the RNA-seq chip. The RNA-seq chip is held in an interface with the connector. Chip there. And this is one of our standard connectors. It's made for making microfluidic connections to chips. Here you can see a video of the RNA sequencing chip running. You can see the beads coming in through the central channel and the cells coming in from the side and droplets being formed at the junction. For more information, please visit our Dynamite Microfluidics website or view more of our videos online.